Good morning and welcome back to Rock Up Racing. Today is race day. We're not at the track. We're at the Silverstone Hotel. Why are we here? Well, we've actually been at Silverstone since yesterday doing some testing with the 1968 911 Gertie. And uh, let's just say it didn't go to plan. Welcome to Rock Up Racing. Why am I awake at this time? It's 10 to 5 on Friday morning and I'm up driving my truck to go pick up Gertie and the van and the rest of the team. And we're going to head to Silverstone this morning because there is a test, there is a test session um, starting, the first session's at 9 o'clock. So, yeah, it's just too early. This time on Rock Up Racing, the team revs up for a thrilling showdown at the iconic Silverstone circuit, racing alongside Bernie's V8s and historic outlaws. But there's a twist in the tale. Following a hectic last race at Donington, the team didn't get the chance to fully test the 1968-911 Gertie. Now, they're arriving a day early at Silverstone for some crucial testing. So here we are, we made it to Silverstone. And it's, it's still cold. But it's not raining, so that's, that's a good start. Look, here's Tommy. Give us a wave, Tom. <laughs> There's Ray. Look, everyone's here. And Robert turns up there. At the last race at Donington, with conditions dominated by rain and much of the event under a safety car, the team had little opportunity to properly test the new geometry and setup that Tom had meticulously adjusted at Coastal Motorsport. The car, a 1968 911, which had undergone a complete engine overhaul over the winter, is still somewhat of an enigma to the team. Testing is not just about clocking times, it's about getting to know the car's personality and figuring out how to maximize its performance. This testing session at Silverstone becomes a crucial step in tuning into the car's capabilities and ensuring the team can make the most of their machine. Just a few laps in, and Robert is already noting a significant improvement in the car's handling. The enhancements, particularly the new rear anti-roll bar installed by Tom at Coastal Motorsport, have stiffened the chassis, making the Porsche more agile and responsive on the demanding Silverstone circuit.
Now it's time for Robert to bring the car back into the pits. This pause allows Tom to check the tire pressures and temperatures, a crucial step in ensuring that the new camber setup isn't adversely affecting the tires. The team is keen to confirm that their adjustments not only enhance the car's performance, but also optimize tire wear for maximum efficiency on the track. You alright? Yeah, all good. Yeah? Just doing like 7,600 in the pit. <laughs> well, there's no more gear on the, like, the first or second run. Oh, so, wow. I don't know how much faster we can go. Wicked. We're going faster through the corners, but then we're going to have to lift from the straights again. Okay. We um, obviously had an imbalance with the tyres. We've replaced the tyres with at AO 48s on the front and 52s on the back, so we've now got a set of 52s at the front as well, so it's now even. We've got some Fuchs wheels, chains of wheels, so they look a bit better. Um, <clears throat> we The geo was a little bit off. Um, obviously, being a Donny, we didn't get much data because it was wet, so um, we've now got quite a bit more camber at the back. We're running about 3.2 degrees of negative camber at the back, about 2.6 at the front. The toe is neutral at the front. We've got about just over a degree of toe in at the back. Um, the rake has stayed the same. Um, roughly anyway, uh, so yeah, the car, the temp, temps are way better. Um, we were getting a, a temperature which was higher on the outside than the inside, which means we were going into positive camber at the start before we set the car up, which was terrible. So now it's been done, just check the temps on this. And um, we've got a higher temp on the inside than the outside, which is ideal, means it's working. Um, so yeah, the temps, obviously we started the car at 25 at the front, at 26 at the front, 25 at the back. It's just come in after doing four, four or five laps. Yeah. And um, the backs are at about 35, um, so it's gaining a lot of tire temp. The track's obviously really dry, so I've dropped them all down to 28. I've took, taken the log out of all the temps, so we can work it out. But um, yeah, that rear left is getting a lot of temperature, so it's good. It's good. The tires are working, so it's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> After a few more promising laps, Robert's session takes an unexpected turn as he speeds past the pit entry. As he maneuvers through Beckett's, a challenging right-hander, he encounters a new problem. The accelerator pedal in his 911 jams, only depressing halfway. Unable to access the full power of the car, Robert must quickly assess his surroundings amidst the track traffic. Now, with the pit entry behind him, he has to carefully navigate a full lap making sure he remains aware and does not impede other racers while managing this sudden mechanical problem. Stuck. Oh. Stuck down? No, it won't go down. Oh, it won't go but down. It'll only go about halfway. Oh, okay. With the car safely back in the paddock, the team springs into action to diagnose the issue. Upon closer inspection, 
they discover that the throttle cable is intact but has been snagging on a small metal tube. Fortunately, this is a straightforward fix. The team breathes a collective sigh of relief, grateful that this hiccup occurred during today's testing rather than in the heat of tomorrow's race. Can we try, can we try increasing the rear anti-roll bar for the next session? Yeah, it's, it's full, full hard at the front, full soft at the back. Yeah, so go to half hard at the rear to see what yeah. difference that makes. Cool. Just as an experiment. Yeah, cool. When you're really on it, it starts, it's got a load of oversteer around that corner down there when you're really... Okay, yeah. There we go. There's Andrew. Hello, boy. The old uh, anti-roll bar adjustment. The closer it is to the moment, the harder the anti-roll bar will be. So we were full soft at the back, full hard at the front. We're now half hard at the back, full hard at the front. So we'll see what sort of difference that makes. With the throttle issue resolved and the rear anti-roll bar stiffened a bit more for enhanced stability, the car is now primed for session two. The team is eager to see how these adjustments will translate on the track, confident that the car is better tuned to handle the demanding curves of Silverstone. It's a red flag. Ugh. And there goes the rescue bus. The second session comes to an abrupt halt as a red flag waves over the track due to an incident. Robert navigates his way back to the pits and joins the queue of cars waiting for the session to resume. The team stays alert and ready, engines idling as they await the green light to continue testing. How you doing, bro? Yeah, that's we right. Relay the hot one, it's 30.1. Oh, it's ideal then. Do you see any new times? Yeah. What was, it, what was the fastest? The first time that came up was a 7.3, which is quicker than the first <laughs> session. But I can't, I'm struggling to match it. That was a good time. Yeah. No bang on, mate. Cool. All between 29 and 30. Good. Awesome. 
Yeah, that's we... no, a really old car, I think his engine's just like that. His MGB just parked over here somewhere. Oh. I didn't see any oil, so... Is it white? Yeah. The lights switch back to green, signaling the all clear for the session to resume. These crucial moments on the track are vital for gathering more data to fine tune the car's setup. With every lap, they are collecting valuable insights that will inform their strategies for the upcoming race. Going well. I think I think he's in the like two, three laps. <laughs> Just as the team starts to gather momentum, the red flag waves once more, cutting short their time on track. With the session clock winding down, there's no opportunity to restart. It's far from ideal when you're dialing in a car for race day. Despite the setbacks, the team must now rely on the data they've managed to collect and prepare as best they can for the challenges that lie ahead. As the red flag is raised once again, the team expects Robert to make a routine return to the pits. But the minutes stretch longer than usual, stirring a sense of unease. Unbeknownst to them, out on the track, Robert has encountered a serious problem that threatens to derail their entire weekend. As Robert rounds cops, he encounters a significant problem. The gearbox fails him, losing first, third, and fifth gears. With the loss of crucial gears, Robert has no choice but to pull off the Wellington straight, a decision that prompts the waving of the red flag.
Stationary on the side of the Wellington Strait, Robert wrestles with the gearbox, trying desperately to find a solution. Despite his efforts, he's left with only second, fourth, and reverse gears. Managing to engage second gear, Robert slowly pulls away, limping back towards the pit lane. Meanwhile, back at the pits, the team waits anxiously, still unaware of the issues plaguing the car. Oh, still coming in. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. That took too long. Like, there was too many cars. Like, like, yeah, there's so many cars. Gearbox. What? It's gone. Gearbox is gone. Yeah. It's done. You're joking. You're on your way on Or did it sound that kind of noise then? Wouldn't do the gearbox. Well, not this gearbox, actually. I mean, this must be strong. With the gearbox compromised, the team faces a grim reality. There's nothing they can do on site to fix the problem. The car is effectively sidelined. Despite it being only early afternoon, the options are limited. They consider retrieving another race car, but each has its complications. The blue car hasn't been touched since its last race at Donington at the end of 2023. Jura isn't race ready, and the 944 is out for tuning. Faced with these constraints, Rock Up Racing is forced to make a tough decision. Reluctantly, they call it a day and withdraw from tomorrow's racing, yeah. a disappointing end to a challenging day at Silverstone. So as you know, uh, the car broke, <clears throat> and obviously we can't race this weekend. But it doesn't mean that we can't have a good time. So you can, it's gonna be a little bit of a different video now, so join us as we have a lovely day out at Silverstone. We just found a bus. Oh, cool. That's good though. Look, we're on a bus. Oh, the bus! What else is the safety car there? So, um, let's go have a look around here. Are you excited, Tom? Very. <laughs> We're in here now. 
I'm on pole. This is good, isn't it, Tom? I'm loving it, mate. It's brilliant. It goes all the way through that. Does it? Oh wow! Oh! Oh wow, look at this! I'm right behind you. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, everything's oh. cool. This is great! Look at the mirrors. It's attached to the mirrors to the suspension. Where is it? The mirrors are on the suspension. Oh, yeah. Look at the mirrors. The mirrors are on the suspension. It's actually well alright. Much better than I thought it was going to be. Oh, Thank you. 